Hey, welcome back Fish Hunt Northwest. We are here in the Bay Lab for a how-to presented by Max Lure. Uh, check out everything that you need relative to walleye, trout, kokanee, steelhead, and some salmon at maxlure.com. Uh, so, real quick recap on some of the gear we were using to find success over at Rufus Woods and actually twitching jigs for triploid rainbow sounds uh, sounds a little different. Sounds like something maybe you would uh, you know reserve for steelhead and or obviously coho. But believe it or not, it works fantastic for these big uh, big trout. Uh, you know, credit to Bill Herzog. He's been doing it for a number of years. Handful of other folks have started twitching jigs as well. It's been something you know. I know the dead worm guys have been doing it for a long time, and it's basically. It comes down to current speed, as I had mentioned earlier, size of jig, color and presentation, exactly how you get them to chase after it. So, first of all, let's talk a little bit about uh, rod selection. You know, we're using these uh, these uh, uh, eight and a half foot, two to six pound trout rods by Okuma, the Celio. Fantastic rod, not going to break the bank. Really, really nice light trout rod to use for this type of fishery. Again, we're throwing jigs that are in an eighth ounce upwards of three eighths. Uh, we took some quarter ounce jigs over there, or excuse me, some uh, half ounce jigs over there. Didn't really need them, didn't need to go that heavy. Three eighths was getting it done all day long when the river was uh, moving at faster speed. So a nice little light rod like this. Again, it's the, uh, it's the Okuma Celio. It's an eight and a half foot, two to six pound. I spool that up on a 2500 series, these happen to be Daiwa reels, 2500 series reel, nice light little reel, holds plenty of line, put on there 30 pound braid, uh, Herzog likes to use nano fill, I stick with my braid, 30 pound, uh, you don't need it for the overall strength, the diameter of 30 pound is so small that uh, when it's a little bit windy and whatnot, if you go down to like 20 pound braid, that is so thin and gets whipped around by the wind so much, you're, you're fighting uh, rod tip wraps with your braid. I just try to eliminate all those problematic things that I know going into it. The wind does blow over there. So I'm gonna spool up with 30 pound braid. I'm gonna run a top shot of fluorocarbon, okay? And I'll use, uh, you know, 12 or 15. I settled on 15 pound maxima fluorocarbon and I'm putting on a pretty good stretch a line. I go three arm lengths. That's going to be uh, upwards of between 15 and 20 feet of 15 pound fluorocarbon secured to my uh, braid for my top shot. Uh, again, you heard me mention it earlier, the water is gin clear over there. You can see 15 plus feet down. So I don't want that high vis braid anywhere near uh, where that jig is going to be presenting down by the fish because they see you relatively well. So 15 to 20 feet, 15 pound fluorocarbon. Then I'm going to tie on a barrel swivel and uh, you know we don't have to go extra large extra heavy duty here I got a size 10 and a size 7 and uh, to be honest uh, a larger uh, swivel really serves no purpose I like to keep it uh, lower profile so I'm going to put on that size 10 and uh, I'm going to secure onto that I go with 10 pound 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader so there's your break off point okay and I'm going to secure two to three feet of 10 pound fluorocarbon to the barrel swivel to the 15 pound top shot, okay? I uh, could simply tie that on and I, you know, I'd be ready to go, I'd be fishing. Uh, two to three feet of 10 pounds. So we've, we've gone from 30 pound braid to 15 pound top shot uh, fluorocarbon. Again, we want it to be extremely clear and then down to a 10 pound. The reason I do that is when you are fishing in and around the uh, pens, they are anchored to earth by massive cables and chains and you can't always tell exactly where those are. You need to go over there with a, a good uh, assortment of color variation and we have a number of them here that we're producing very well. Purple Haze, uh, White Snake is the, is the black and white that I was using uh, time and time again and hooked a number of fish. It's got some, some flash in there. Again, these are jingling jigs. So we got white snake, purple haze, uh, we got uh, black magic. So these, uh, these flat out got it done. I believe we hooked fish on every one of these colors. 
uh, down to an eighth ounce of which we have the, uh, what did he call it, Freddy? So we got uh, Freddy, which is a purple and red with some black in there. And then of course the Nightmare also produced. So eighth ounce will get it done when the water current is moving slow enough and they're not flowing a lot of water. You can uh, gauge your current and you can gauge the speed of fall of your jig. So an eighth ounce might be getting it done. When that water speeds up and you actually are throwing your jig out there and as it begins to sink, you're noticing that it gets swept laterally out in front of you or behind you or wherever direction, the, depending on boat position and, and, and where it's landing, uh, where that jig's going to get pushed, okay? And if it's moving laterally too fast and not getting down on a steady decline or a steady fall, uh, that's when you want to up your size of jig. So you go to that 3 8 it seemed to get it done uh, time and time again. The reason I go with that 10 pound backing up to that uh, particular comment is because when you get that jig into that cable or that chain or whatever it is that it's going to wrap around, instead of breaking off your entire 15 pound, you know, 15 to 20 foot top shot of uh, fluorocarbon, you simply sever that at the, uh, is somewhere in or around your barrel swivel or at your jig. It's gonna get wrapped up on that chain or on that cable you're going to lose that jig. You're going to lose maybe part of your little, uh, you know, two to three foot leader of 10 pound. No big deal. Uh, you got a swivel on there, tie that leader section back on, tie a jig on, and you're back fishing. If you simply tie your jigs to your top shot, maybe you're running 10 or 12 pound top shot, and you wrap that jig up around that uh, anchor or that, uh, that cable, you potentially break off more than half your top shot. You break off maybe all the way at your knot, depending on which one you use and you're gonna spend more time out of the water than in. So 30 pound braid, 15 pound top shot, 15 to 20 feet in length, and then a two to three foot uh, liter of 10 pound fluorocarbon right to your jig off a small size seven barrel swivel. That's pretty much it. And uh, again, stick with a lighter rod. If you have a six to 10 pound uh, nine foot steelhead rod, a side drifting rod, that's gonna work really well, although believe it or not, it's a little too heavy for this fishery, even though you potentially are catching fish 10 to 15 pounds. Um, there is no problem getting those triploids in on a two to six pound rod that is a 10 to 15 pound fish. You can do it all day long and have a blast doing it, and I recommend you do so. I would get out there and find these relatively low priced uh, Okuma Celio rods. Again, this eight to six, two to six pound, Gets it done all day long, split yourself up with a 2500 series reel, and uh, get on our website, uh, www.fishhuntnw.com, go to the online store, uh, hit the shop here or shop now, and you're going to find all Jinglin uh, jigs, all Jinglin jig selections, you're going to have all colors of the Rufus Woods uh, opportunities with the purples, the blacks, the white heads, the various uh, jigs on there, and they all produced, they all worked really well. You can go out and buy other jigs, but I'm telling you, these are tried and true, tied on Gamagatsu hooks, and they work extremely well, and they're well worth the money. You even get some of the steelhead jigs, there's 10 different colors now, but over there are the producers, and you can see the, the, uh, the similarities here. Every one of these has some black in there, okay? The black and whites, the black and reds, the black and purple. Uh, the uh, the UV head or the solid black head or the white, the contrast, okay? We're talking about contrast. These rainbow trout tend to, believe it or not, act a little bit like a steelhead <laughs> sometimes, and we're getting them on jigs. Speaking of that, you're going to cast your jig out, um, especially like these, uh, these uh, 3 8 ounce jigs. You're going to cast them out about 30, 40 feet from the boat, and you're just going to let that thing sink, okay? Leave your bail open if you want to. Just let it sink. It's going to be on a, on a steady fall. And then at a certain point, if you close your bail, it's going to start pendulum uh, in towards you. And as that line goes uh, a little bit tight, you can reel down a little bit and just give it a little jig. Reel down a little bit, give it a little jig, and you're going to slowly work that back towards you. What you're doing is you're in 70, 75 feet of water. You're casting out 30 or 40 feet. You're allowing that jig to fall. These fish, much like coho, much like steelhead, it's a reactionary bite. They're hitting it on the fall. So if you cast it out and allow it to fall down through the water column, you're going to get down to that area of where those fish are suspended. Rely on your electronics, read your electronics, see where they're at. You, good electronics like our Raymarine uh, uh, options, we can actually watch that jig cutting its way down through the water and see when it's in the zone, and then you can begin twitching. Or you can do the old-fashioned way, go by feel, which works uh, extremely well as well. 
So allow that jig to fall, give it some twitches, work it back to the boat, do it again. Continue to cast in and around the uh, floating uh, structures, in and around uh, that area where those fish uh, pile up. If you're using electronics and you find a, a wad of fish out there away from the net pens, by all means, uh, boat control, cast to them, let it uh, get down to where they're at. If you have to go up to a quarter ounce, by all means do so. Have some in your arsenal just in the event you're in a stretch of water that they're moving a little faster on any particular day, depending on how much water they're flowing. So uh, I hope that kind of clears it up. Jig presentation is a great alternative there at Rufus Woods. It's gonna get it done. You're gonna go home with a couple of really nice fat triploids and hopefully you have a really good time doing it. So we'll jump out for a quick break. Uh, again, all these jigs and everything you see here, you can find at uh, fishhuntnw.com. Shop now and get your jingling jigs. Okay, jump out for a quick break. We come back, we'll be in studio to uh, close out the show with Dave Calhoun.